Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be replacing the auxiliary belt, auxiliary belt tensioner and auxiliary belt deflection pulley on my 2006 BMW 318CI fitted with the N46 B20 engine. But I believe this process will be similar if not the same for all vehicles fitted with four cylinder N42 or N46 engines. First we'll take a quick look at the parts I've got here. I've gone for a Gates auxiliary belt and that is your part number there and I've gone for a Febby Bilstein tensioner part number there and a Febby Bilstein deflection pulley and that is your part number there, 27374 um, I will leave a link in the description where as to where you can find the part numbers for your vehicle I believe these parts fit all vehicles fitted with the N42 or N46 engines but it's best just to check just beforehand for your particular car As for the fitting process, it's actually definitely something that's very accessible even if you don't have very much mechanical knowledge and next we're going to have a quick look at the tools you're going to need to complete this job. So these are some of the tools you're going to need to complete this job and as you can see it's really not that much. Just got a breaker bar, a torque wrench, a half inch ratchet, a 16mm ring spanner, I've got a 16 and 17mm socket, a 8mm allen bit, I've got a quarter inch ratchet with an extension and a 10mm socket, flathead screwdriver, a couple of needle nose pliers and a standard pair of pliers and that is it. Now with that being said that's enough talking we'll get on and start the job. So the first step is to remove this large piece of plastic ducting here. Um, it's attached at the front with two plastic clips, one here and well there used to be one there but as is normally the case with these cars it's snapped off. Um, I believe it also attaches down by the washer bottle here but again this is just flapping around it's broken. So we're going to come in here and just with a pair of pliers just pull that clip out, removes the centre part of it, and that just allows us to pop it out like that, remove the rest of the clip, and then this whole piece of ducting just pops out from the front and then just slide it out from the airbox there, and that removes that. With that piece of ducting removed we can now see the orientation of the auxiliary belt, um, so it runs along here, round the crank pulley, round the tensioner here, down around the water pump, then up back along around the alternator pulley here, and then behind that, in in front of the deflection pulley here, then back down behind the aircon compressor, and then back down to your crank pulley here. Now it's a good idea at this point to probably draw yourself a diagram or take some reference pictures just so you know how the belt's rooted when you put it all back together. Now the reason we're replacing these parts is because the tensioner pulley here um, has play in it and it's causing the belt to move side to side as it spins. Um, it's causing this wear on the edge of the belt in some places it's actually become frayed like just here um, and eventually this is going to cause the belt to fail so we're replacing this pulley here and also the deflection pulley here which also has a little bit of play in it which I'll show you once the belt is off. Now if you're only replacing the tensioner um, this is about as far as you need to go in terms of re removing things for access However, because we're replacing this deflection pulley down here as well, the access isn't great. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this air box here. Now the first thing to do in order to remove the air box is to take out these two bolts here. Uh, a 10 millimeter, I'm just going to use a quarter inch ratchet with a small extension and uh, whisk them out. With those bolts removed, the air box will feel loose. And the next thing to be removed will just be in behind here. You'll see. A jubilee clip, uh, undo that, and that will allow you to remove this piece of ducting here off the back of the airbox. And once you've undone this jubilee clip, this rubber hose can just be pulled off the airbox here. And then the only other thing you have to do is down here, there's a plastic peg that goes into this little rubber bushing on this resonator here, um, just need to pop that out as well. And then finally, there is the wiring connector here for the MAF sensor. Um, just got plastic little tabs on the other side, you just need to pinch them together and pull it off. Here is the plug for the MAF sensor removed. You might find it a little stiff, it may help to use two flat headed screwdrivers to push these two together and withdraw it. Um, with that taken off, you can now pull this entire airbox out and out of the way. Which gives us a much better view of our pulley down there. Although this resonator is still slightly in the way, now you could just work around it, you can manipulate it slightly, um, but I'm going to remove it for the purposes of this video. In order to do that, we need to remove this piece of pipe here, the Jubilee clip in there, which is only accessible really if we remove this engine cover. 
which is nice and simple, just a 10 millimeter bolt here and a 10 millimeter bolt here. And this whole thing lifts up from the front and then pulls outwards. So that is the engine cover now removed. It has these two little plastic prongs on the underside, which fit here and way back under there. You can just about see. So when you remove it, you just need to lift it up from the front and just sort of pull it outwards as it comes off. The cover out of the way, it now reveals the Jubilee clip behind here, which you need to remove to take this piece of piping off. Um, you also need to carefully remove this small hose here, which is quite delicate. Maybe you get in there with just a flat base screwdriver and just work it off. That piece of ducting is now removed from the throttle body in there. It may put up a bit of a fight, just needs a bit of a wiggle to get it off. Um, maybe use a bit of silicon spray if it's really protesting. So the next thing to do is to detension the belt. So what you want to do is get a breaker bar with a 16mm socket on here and rotate it clockwise, which will remove the tension off the belt and then you need to slide it off. removing the tensioner we can now go around and unhook it from all of the pulleys. I'm just going to take it off now from the water pump, up across, off the alternator, off the aircon compressor, pull it out. Now we can really see some of the damage to the belt that's been caused by the play in these pulleys. Um, it's like this the whole way around. Um, this has been left it would have got more and more frayed causing a bit of a burnt and rubber smell as you're driving along and the bearings in this tensioner pulley here are completely gone you can see there is some side to side movement but if you listen carefully you can hear that noise and you can actually see it moving side to side as it turns I'll also show you over here the deflection pulley doesn't have quite as much play as the tensioner, but once again makes quite a lot of noise as it spins, so it definitely needs to be replaced as well. Now to remove the tensioner there is a 8mm allen bolt inside this hole in the centre there. Now it might have the remains of a dust cap on top of it, mine did, um, kind of disintegrated as I took it out, I just used a pair of needle low pliers to pull it out. With the dust cover out of the way, now insert your 8mm allen bit, make sure it's well seated in there. I've just got this adapter here, so I can now put my half inch breaker bar on there to break it loose. So when the bolt gets looser, I'm just going to use a short extension and undo it with my fingers to stop it just suddenly dropping out. As you're doing this, just support the tensioner with your other hand to stop it suddenly dropping. The tensioner out of the way. I'm going to turn our attention now to the idler pulley. Um, this again is just a 16 millimeter bolt. Now just finishing the bolt by hand like I did with the tensioner. Just see down there the way it's making its way out. With the pulley loosened all the way you can just remove it. So at this point you just want to do a little comparison between the new parts and the old parts just to make sure they're definitely exactly the same. You'll notice the new tensioner has this locking pin inserted which locks it in the fully tensioned position compare it to the old one which is in the fully open position but aside from that you just want to have a look at the bottom and make sure all the lugs are in the same place and this one looks absolutely fine and we'll just do a quick comparison now this is the sound of the new pulley or lack of sound compared to the old one this one's definitely shot same with the deflection pulley, very simple, and those two look 
perfectly fine to me. The next step is going to be installing the new deflection pulley. So I'm just going to hand tighten it to start it off and then we'll come in with our 16mm socket and tighten it up the rest of the way. The new tensioner actually had a 17mm bolt as it turns out, but there it is all installed. Um, I'll get you some torque specs uh, for this and all the other components we've removed and put them down in the description for you. Next stage is going to be installing the new tensioner. It's probably the trickiest part of the whole job. You can see the bolt hole is way back there, but you can see by the shape of the block where the lugs on the tensioner need to go. It's a bit of trial and error this, just take your time and eventually you'll be able to fit the bolt into the hole back there. And my suggestion at this point is to insert your 8mm allen bit just with a small extension and then use your fingers just to feel around for the bolt hole. And by having your hand on the extension here you'll be able to feel as the bolt clicks into place and I'll turn mine a couple of turns and it definitely feels like it's going in, isn't cross threaded or anything so we're going to continue tightening this up. So I've now installed the new tensioner and torqued it down to the proper spec. The tensioner does come with a new uh, dust cap to go in. You may remember the old one was completely disintegrated, so I'm going to reinstall that now. It just pushes in like that. So the next step is to install the brand new belt. At this point you're going to want to refer to the drawings you made earlier or any pictures you might have taken. Okay, I'm going to show you this as best I can. Let's start by looping it up around the alternator pulley here. And make sure it just seats itself into all the grooves. Then goes down in front of the deflection pulley here. And then back behind the aircon compressor at the back here. point just try and get it rooted and we'll worry about getting it all lined up in a minute. So now I'm going down under the crank pulley and coming back around the tensioner and then down over the water pump. So you want to try and get it to a point where it's like this so it's on all of the pulleys um, all roughly rooted round all the grooves lined up and just have the slack at the tensioner here, just like that. Right, the next step is going to be tensioning the belt. So in order to remove the locking pin, we're going to have to turn the pulley as clockwise as we can, which just takes a bit of tension off that pin and allows us to withdraw it. Once that's done, we can let the tension off the belt by rotating this spanner anti-clockwise again, and that will gently bring up the belt tension. There we go, that is the belt now tensioned. So at this point you just want to make a quick visual inspection of the belt, make sure it is correctly sat on all the pulleys, and in my case everything is looking fine. The next stage is to basically reinstall everything that we've taken off in order to replace the pulley. Um, first thing to reinstall is this piece of intake pipe. I'm going to use a bit, bit of silicon spray around the opening here to help with reinstallation. So with the use of the silicon spray, that made that pipe pop right back onto the throttle body without any problems. Um, next step is just to do up the Jubilee clip with a flat-headed screwdriver. Everything lined up, you can reinstall the two 10mm bolts. The engine cover reinstalled. The next step is to be replacing our air box. So first you've got to make sure that this plastic tab here fits into this little rubber grommet down here and then it's just a case of lining up these two here with the bolt holes down here and finally remember to plug in the MAF sensor in there. Right, you can just about see in there where that plastic peg's got to go. Just in there. 
so just need to wiggle this around a bit to get that home. Once that's in place, you can reinsert the plastic intake pipe and just spin the Jubilee clip round so you can do it up, like so. After a bit of wiggling, the air box is back on. So the next thing we're going to do is just reinstall our map sensor plug. It only goes on one way. Just install that on there and click it into place. With that done, we can install our two 10 millimeter bolts here and here to hold the air box in place. So with those done up, all that's left to reinstall is our piece of ducting there. But before we do that, I'm just gonna start the engine and make sure the belt spins freely and there's not any issues. So I've just run the engine for five minutes and I couldn't see any issues with the belt at all. So now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall this plastic cover. I normally try and feed it there into the air box first, like that. Just line it up down here at the bottom and reinstall what remains of your plastic clips. And with that done, the whole job's done. I'd just like to thank everyone for watching. Um, I hope this video has been helpful to you and I hope it saved you some money fixing your car yourself. I'll see you in the next video, bye.